Okay, so good afternoon everyone. Thank you very much for coming today. Today um, we're doing a workshop. So we're thinking about having probably two groups um, and we've got a series of questions and what we're thinking about doing is basically having you talk briefly about each question together and then we'll give you our ideas. This, the workshop title, um, by the numbers, we really believe in setting very specific goals and looking at numbers in terms of planning and explaining the program to students. So, uh, but first of all, we just uh, so we are teachers from Japan. First of all, um, yes, I'm Daniel Eichhorst. And as you can see, I'm not so young, okay? And it, it turns out that uh, I've, uh, I've been working in Japan for about 30 years now. The first, uh, first 20, 20 some years were really teaching a secondary level, junior high school and uh, high school. Uh, the last uh, seven or eight years have been in university. And uh, as far as my experience with uh, extensive reading, I, I want to uh, describe that for you. Uh, I've been influenced by two people. Uh, one person is Ken Schmidt. Uh, his wife is with us here today, so I've got to say good things about Ken. But uh, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's a person that first introduced me to extensive reading and graded readers. I want to make a little distinction here. And uh, as a result of Ken's influence, about eight years ago, in junior high school, uh, at the first year of junior high school, I was a homeroom teacher. And I taught this class of students uh, four times a week. And uh, there was a Japanese teacher who uh, was interested in using graded readers. So we bought, we bought a bunch of graded readers and to put in the junior high school library. And I did try using them with my students. And you know what? I failed. Okay? And the, the reason I failed was that the books we got were too difficult. Okay, and, and I didn't really realize that at the time. Okay. Then we fast forward to about four years ago. I was uh, in university at Toho, I'm at Toho University. Uh, we, we teach at Tokyo University in Japan. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with the Japanese uh, system, uh, Tokyo University is one of the former imperial universities. Okay, so uh, relatively speaking, this would be about the fourth ranked university in Japan right now. Okay. Uh, Tokyo University. Kyoto University, and maybe Osaka University, and then uh, Tohoku. And it's, a, it's a research institution. There are no English majors. Okay? And, and, uh, and uh, at Tokyo University, I met Mr. Ben Sheeran, who I had previously known, but I observed him. He was kind of a one man extensive reading show. Okay? And uh, uh, I, I'm a quite a cautious person. You know, at this age, you know, there's a reason I've, I've lived this long. And I watched him, and, and I saw what he was doing. I saw the response. I was aware of, of the, you know, the, the potential of extensive reading. And so first I worked with Ben. To, I did one class. And then uh, now I, I'm teaching uh, last semester. There were five classes of extensive reading. And, and, and we have worked together to develop an extensive reading program at Tokyo University. I, so I've been a teacher for 13 years now, all in Japan, and, but I started with extensive reading uh, when I was in high school, and I didn't realize it was extensive reading. So in French and German classes, our teachers asked us to read novels. So they weren't graded, they were much too difficult, but even with not the imperfect materials, I still got the ability boost, and more importantly, the motivation boost. And that really changed my foreign language studies. And fast forward to Japan, teaching in Japan, and I started trying extensive reading with students like that. And I remembered my own experience. I thought, okay, if I can give this to my students, hopefully it will transform their experience as well. Um, I started off by myself, as Dan said, first carrying books, 
in bags to class. Uh, and then later I got a small little cart, so I push books <laughs> to class. I was quite famous in the university. My cart was, had ten boxes, and the other teachers were, who's this strange guy with his boxes? But, um, now we have quite a large program. I'm really pleased to say that, mainly thanks to Dan's help, he's a logistics genius. So he's helped with the planning and the implementation. We now have, uh, how many teachers? Seven or eight teachers? Well, various semesters, yeah. yeah. Seven or eight teachers, and we're teaching quite a considerable number of the students, 10%, 20% of the students. Uh, we have, we're working with the library now. The library is very supportive. And if you go to this website, you can see information about our program. This is for the students, so it's got information about goals and word counts especially. So. I want to make one more comment here about why this appealed to me in university, because I think that there's a special context in Asia, uh, and, and it might apply to other countries uh, in the world, but uh, because I worked for many years in the secondary level, junior high school, high school, and I saw students studying English every year, you know, we, this is something that's talked about, how many years have you studied English? And, and uh, I've developed kind of an, a, an approach, I guess, is that, you know, teachers need to be problem solvers about, you know, what we're giving the students. And what I saw when I moved from the secondary level to university was that uh, my students in university, the first year students, they have progressed through the educational system. English is all about that entrance examination. Okay? I mean, this is, this is typical, I think, in Korea, uh, Japan, I think it's fair to say China probably is similar. Uh, I don't really know about other countries very well, but uh, I knew this about my students at Tokyo University in particular, this kind of elite group of students, but it goes across the board. So when students have passed the entrance exam, are they done with English? You know, I mean, in their mind, they are. You know, and, and so, so the first semester, the first semester of the first year of university is about your last chance to reboot the attitude of students towards English. And I, I was I, kind of desperately searching for ways to transform this entrance examination English study to practical kind of English study, and extensive reading it really is one of those means, and, and I think we've really shown that. So, uh, so when you consider doing extensive reading, if you aren't, uh, or you know, you, the context is, is you know really important. Okay. So what we're going to do today is we have a list of eight, I think, eight questions that we're going to go through that we think are really important in terms of setting up and running extensive reading programs. Um, what we'd like to do is make some groups and for each question have you spend about two, two or three minutes, it's a really short time, just give your, your particular situation, any ideas you might have about the question, and then we'll talk about our ideas as well. Um, at the end of the workshop, or if you have to leave early, uh, we'll, we'll also do. We're going to distribute um, our teaching handbook, which is bilingual English and Japanese, <coughs> and the most recent student guide. These two things. Um, these two. Okay. And then at the end, we're hoping to have about 10, 10, 15 minutes to answer questions. If you have any questions that haven't been answered so far, so um, we've talked about this, so we'll skip that. Although. One thing uh, we do, as Dan mentioned, we don't teach English majors. We teach all the students in the university, and we teach them their compulsory classes. So I have nurses and engineers and Japanese language majors, and so we have to improve their English, even though it's not necessarily their. Sorry. Okay. Right, so let's make some groups. Um, 
we're hoping okay. groups of three or four. So I think if you four, if you yeah. can work yeah. together, maybe go forward one. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Could you move across here? Move over here, here and make a happy group of three here. <laughs> and uh, can you uh, let's see, yeah, could you move forward? Okay, so let's take about two minutes. Please introduce yourselves, uh, your teaching context, and uh, your experience of extensive reading. Again, really short, about two or three minutes. <laughs> Extensive Reading World Congress. However, um, in practice, I do find that there's quite a wide range of, of what extensive reading actually is in schools. So, just again, just for a couple of minutes, so for you, what is extensive reading? What defines it? And how would you explain an extensive reading class? So, remember, define and explain. Okay, okay, and this is not, not theoretically, okay, this, this, is, this workshop is practical, okay, so, so, so good luck. <laughs>
<laughs> enjoy, enjoy is, is great, but just not hate it. I'll settle for that. <laughs> So that's our definition of, of what extensive reading is. So based upon that, how can we create a program that encourages, pushes the students into reading um, as much as possible at the right level and without hating it? Because for me, one of the main goals of my program is that the students continue reading once the classes are finished. So the class is to train them and hopefully at least some of them will choose to continue reading for the rest of their career and beyond, right, so after university and so on. So that's my main goal for the program. Um, our next question, uh, this is quite a short one I think, how would you classify or arrange readers, or reading material even? So how would you, uh, yeah, classify it, sort it into levels, um, maybe set it up physically in the library? What, what system would you have, or do you have, if you already have classes? So let, let's talk about that. Yeah, it's very interesting. People are coming from all different contexts. So I think this it's a good opportunity to share your context and how you are making those decisions. So please. Yeah, 
things like the context or the cultural references. Some stories are much easier for Japanese students, some stories are much more difficult, and so on. So we can't take all of that into account at the moment. So for our program, um, we created five levels, basically. Um, and they're color-based. They're explained in the handbook, so don't worry about writing anything down. You can read about it later. But basically, we start off from a low level, about 300 headwords, and that's our first level. And we level up until the final level is the kind of 2,500, 3,000 headword level. Um, and we encourage our students to go through those levels. It's based on the Extensive Reading Foundation scale. Does everyone know the website? Basically, if you go to the Extensive Reading Foundation website, they have uh, five broad levels, and then each 
each level is divided into three. So there's 15 or maybe 20, they, they put some more on the end. Basically, there's a wide range here. We just use the five broad ones for our program. So we have our five levels. We don't arrange the books by genre. You know, romance and non-fiction and so on. We haven't done that. But for us, a really big breakthrough was when we asked the library not to sort the books by series, but by level. So originally the library said, okay, we're going to put all the Oxford books here, um, the, you know, the easy ones at one end and the difficult ones at the other end. We said, okay, no, please put all the red books on one shelf, all the orange books on one shelf, and so on. And that really made a big difference in terms of the students being able to find what they're looking for. Um, and also to browse more as well. Another thing, we take books to class as well as have books in the library. Um, I think that's quite important. Although recently we've been trying to reduce the books in class because we don't want to be dealing with it and forcing the students to go to the library. And if you do that, then the library will like you and give you more money because you're boosting their, their numbers. The more numbers they have, the more their budget is going to be protected. So you get a real synergy going with the library if this works. Well, I think this relationship with the library, okay, so uh, at the level we're working, it, it's, it's a program. And, uh, you know, you, you, you can believe in extensive reading, but you have to understand how the political nature of getting people to cooperate, okay, and, 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 and this is where collaborating together, we've managed to do this, I think. And once you get some advocates in administration and the library, uh, this kind of program can really take off. So, so uh, uh, the only thing I'd say about these levels now, we've, we've been successful getting the library to divide these. We still have one thing we have to manually do. We are the two people that put the colored stickers on the books. Okay? And, 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 and this is not a small thing, I'll, I'll tell you. Okay? All, all of these program elements, they take time. Okay? And, and so, uh, Ben and I, there was a period where every week, you know, at the same time, we'd go over to the library and put stickers on the books. Okay? You just have to build that into your schedule. But, but uh, you know, these are all little things, but uh, they're significant when the numbers get big, okay? 20,000 books. <laughs> but you know what? That's, that's about the last thing. That's the last thing we're responsible for right now. And I think that's a huge step forward, basically. Right. So we set targets for our students. I think that's very important to mm. set expectations. So I find expectations tend to be too low. Uh, with regards to English in Japan. Um, so we, we have targets and we'll explain how they're calculated in a moment. But before that, if you have a program, how do you set reading targets? Do you set reading targets? And if you don't, then where do you think the target should be for your students? Okay, take that. So get your calculator out and, <laughs> and you know, demonstrate to us so you know how you do this, okay? Okay, go ahead. your work. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
I like, like, I like this. I this is it from, from you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but our numbers are much smaller. Considerable subsection of students that immediately try to find the shortest book possible, right? which is kind of counterproductive, I think. Then we moved on to pages, and same thing, right? Does the book have pictures? How big is the font? And so on. It, it's not a very, it didn't seem like a fair measure. Uh, and we, just, we ended up settling on uh, word counts how many words are in the book. Most publishers are kind enough to print that on the book now, some don't. Uh, I'm fighting with a, a few publishers, trying to get them to cooperate. Um, you can find the information online if you really need to. So another part of our job is writing the word counts into the books that don't have them. Um, but in terms of our targets, I'll let Dan Yes, go. yes. I, I think this is a, a complete system issue. Okay, it's a complete system issue. You know, it can be adapted to any level of school. Okay? and, and um, the, the context we are working within right now at Tokyo University, we, um, we have two 15-week semesters. Two 15-week semesters. The students are required to take uh, a reading class each semester of the first year. And <clears throat> what this means generally in terms of actual uh, time is 15 class, if you, if you have 15 classes in the semester, the first class is to say hello and to explain the syllabus, introduce extensive reading. Um, if you can get students immediately reading, okay, the first week, this means you could have students reporting about extensive reading 14 times. Okay? And, and these are the kind of things you have to think about here. Okay? Now, uh, so we have 14 reporting uh, weeks. Then 
one of the things that surprised me about Japanese universities is the number of classes they have. Okay? This, is, this is really very similar to high school in terms of their schedule. Okay? And uh, the Ministry of Education actually has guidelines in Japan for the amount of time that you can expect students to work for your course outside of you know the class. Okay? And roughly you have to think one credit or one hour, okay, roughly, right? So what I have each week with my students is I have 90 minutes of class and a reasonable expectation is 60 minutes outside of class. Okay, everybody's following me here, right? It's it's to the numbers. The numbers, alright? Now Within that 90 minutes, within that 90 minutes of a uh, class period, we think extensive reading is so important that students should be reading in class silently for roughly 45 minutes. Okay? Roughly 45 minutes. All right. So here we have 45 minutes of in-class reading, and <coughs> oh yes, yeah, I, I can I can start here. Yeah, I, I actually I have now. You don't, you don't have to take any notes here, okay? We have the kind of the handy dandy chart here, okay? But here, let me, uh, just so I don't, uh, so 45 minutes, 45 minutes of in-class time, okay? Then we have this, we have this one hour, one hour of, I would say, an average student, but I want students who are below average to be able to pass. Okay, this is this is really important. Okay, these are not English majors. English is not life or death for many of them. Okay, at the same time, our university these students are quite motivated. Okay, so uh, so English is not a hard sell. Okay, it's, it's, it's a little thing here, but but I'm going to say that my student, <coughs> my least motivated student, will only study 25 minutes outside of class. Okay. Okay, so 45 plus 25 gives me 70 minutes. Okay. It's kind of interesting because Paul Nations uh, talked this morning. He, you know, this is pretty good actually. Okay, 70 minutes a week. Okay, now the next factor is reading speed. Reading speed. Right now, it's interesting. Today, Paul Nation mentioned 150 words per minute as a moderate reading speed. I'm not interested in setting the low goal as a moderate level. I want to go down. Okay? I want to go down. Okay? So, I'm going to say 100 words per minute. Okay? 100. Everybody following me here so far? Yes. Okay? Okay. Now, can somebody tell me, what is 70 times 100? 7,000. I'm pretty good here so far. Okay? How many, re how many weeks reporting? 14. So far, so good. Okay. 14 weeks. What's the what's that total gonna be? Well, it's gonna be seventy thousand plus twenty-eight thousand. In other words, it's one hundred thousand. Right? Pretty close, pretty close, all right? So, so if you take this lowest reading speed, and for our students, 100, I would say, would be a, a slow reading speed, okay? Take into account this number of weeks, okay? The engaged time, extensive reading, and this, this actually, you know, in class, right? So this is pretty much guaranteed, okay? In this way, we have logically, in a way that the students can easily comprehend, uh, we can explain our lowest goal, 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 all right? Now, the factor then, the factors, these factors then all change here, right? <coughs> Motivated stu students or average students, average students might spend 60 minutes a week, okay? 60 minutes a week. And if we do the same way, the same speed here, Okay, I'm just going to start putting a couple numbers up here. This goes up to 157,000 words if you are willing to put in an hour. 
Okay? So we just keep going in this way and we set reading goals. Now, the upper limit, the upper limit here, okay, that's the one I want to show you. And um, the upper limit, now we're going to change here. When we set the upper limit, we're not using this, okay? This is to set the lower limit, okay? To set the upper limit, we really, we, we shifted this number to 130, okay? 130, and that still isn't a huge increase, all right? An upper limit here, 130 words per minute, we would expect students to spend about two and a half hours, okay, outside of class reading, really, right? And based on this, the number would be about 380,000 and above that, okay? So, the key idea here is the concept, okay? The factors, how much time are you willing to spend in class? How much time do you expect students to use out of class? And then, how do you judge your students' reading speed? Okay? Using these variables, you know, you can set very reasonable, explainable goals for students. And this is the way we do it. Yeah. Ben, do you have anything to add there? Yeah. yeah. Um, one fairly unique feature of our system is we force all the students to start with the lowest level books. Uh, we do this because the students have spent a lot of time preparing for tests. So they're quite good at dealing with short, difficult passages. But we find that they don't have the stamina to read longer things in English. Uh, also their reading speed is quite low. So to address both of those, we force them to read the earliest, the, the lowest level books and, until they reach a certain goal and then they level up. Uh, this gives them lots of fluency practice at the bottom. They start off reading things that are far too easy. However, the good students level up really quickly. So it doesn't really hold them back too much. And for the weaker students, it gives them a chance to catch up in terms of fluency and so on. I think this is really a key, one of the key aspects of our program. Forcing all the students to start with the starter level books. <coughs> of course, the best students finish them within a week, um, and so on. But again, you can read about the specific numbers later on. Right, our next question is, what do students do in a reading class? So, we've already mentioned 45 minutes of reading. However, what do they do? That, for us, that's half the class. So, half the class is spent reading. So, what else could we do in the class? Or what do you do in your reading classes? Yeah, let's please, please uh, talk again. I tell you what, could you two move over here? We then we have four here. Okay, I hate to ask you to do that moving there, but uh, yeah, thank you. Then you can read uh, four again. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you.
motivational targets work. Right? If we can't collect meaningful data, then the, the targets don't matter, and we can't encourage the students to read. Uh, and what we've ended up with, we've been developing these forms for a while. We have the students uh, report which books they've read, and also add up the word counts. And they hand those in each week. We collect that each week, we put it into an Excel sheet, uh, it builds up the students' grade. We also ask them to write short book reports for books of the second level and up. The easiest books, they're too short, we don't bother with book reports. But once we get to um, kind of bookworms 2 kind of level, that's our orange books, they're kind of 4,000, 5,000 words. We ask them to write a brief report about what it's about. And that's it. The thing about these book reports is uh, we, we, we give them a score. We do not correct any of the English. Okay? Uh, but one thing we do is we scan them all. Okay? Uh, this, this is, a, again, a, a system thing. But it, it's surprisingly important in case you get students who get creative and show their friend book report. Okay? And, 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 and this awareness, this will, will come to this again. But, but that's one thing when we process. How we process these, we describe this in the manual. Okay? And this is very important, actually. actually. That's a good point. Because the scanning allows us to give them back the next week. So the students get very quick feedback. And they get a score for their, their word count. We tell them this is your score for this week in terms of the amount of reading you've done. And they also get a score for the book reports. So it's very quick feedback. And the students that were performing at a substandard level, very quickly, adjust because they realize what the, the targets are and they see that most people are meeting them. So that's quite important. Okay. So how do you grade your students? Oh, yes. Am I allowed to ask a question? We certainly won't stop you. <laughs> yeah. Because I really like this uh, student writing a book report. Mm. However, I found that what uh, the difficulty I encountered is that if I ask students to read classic readers, it's very easy to find a brief summary online. So students do not have to read a book. They can just oh, go on the line and oh, um, and, and, and check the summary. So how? That's my pen. Right. We're going. We're going to talk about that on the next question. Mm -hmm. So if we can come back to we'll you. come back to you. Okay. Is that okay. okay. So how do you assign grades to students in your reading classes or in your reading program? Okay. That's our next discussion. Can you join this group? Thank you. Okay. 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 Okay.
of the teaching job, assigning a grade. Okay? And uh, we try to make this as comprehensible for the students as possible. Uh, there are five factors that uh, determine a student's grade in our case. Uh, number one, total word count for the semester. Okay? Number two, average weekly score for the semester. In other words, if a student thinks that they're going to get the top grade by submitting massive word counts in two weeks, uh, they're going to be sadly disappointed. Okay, and so so we we uh, we ensure that uh, that there. This is an effort to develop a reading habit. We we have this called a lifelong reading habit, and so you have to institutionalize that thinking. Okay? And so we have this average weekly score. Next. Total book report points. Okay? Total book report points. Okay? <clears throat> Finally, completion of timed reading exercises and participation in speaking listening activities. Okay? This is basically show up and be positive. Okay? And, 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 and that, that's, that's good enough in this case. Okay? Finally, attendance. Okay? Attendance. Right? So these are the five elements. Right? Then what we do to help students plan. Okay? And, you know, your students, they do need to plan, actually, okay? I mean, uh, we have clearly identified what should a student do to get a double A grade. In our case, that's the top grade, okay? The next group we want to serve, respectively, what is the minimum required to get credit with a C grade? Okay? I, I, I think, you know, we do not have to, these are adults, okay? Make a decision, okay? And we want to clearly identify, okay? And then students can determine between those, right? And so, so that's our approach to it. That's our approach. Now, if you're curious, what does it really take to get that top grade? Achieve a total word count of at least 400,000 words. Okay? okay. Finish the red level in the first week and read 25,000 words a week or more to attain a weekly score of 5.0 each week. Okay? Submit high quality book reports each week and get at least 90% of the book report points possible. Complete all of the time reading exercises and participate posit positively in the speaking listening activities. Attend all of the classes. You know? And unbelievably, we get a lot of students to do this. Okay? 
This is really exciting. Really exciting. All right. All right. <clears throat> so we mentioned supplementary activity briefly. Um, so what kind of things can we do in class other than reading? That's what supplementary activities are for. So we've got the silent reading, we've got the timed reading, and then other. And let's keep it really brief. If each person could just mention one idea. Something You've already been talking about this a bit, as I've heard. Okay, so just, yeah, we're going to give you one minute, 30 seconds. Right, go ahead. Okay, okay, okay. a minute and a half. Um, I'm going to introduce three activities that I think are quite uh, beneficial, give you good bang for the buck as it were. The first one is having students introduce a book they've read that week to each other. We have them work in pairs, we randomise it if we can, and we have them do that two or three times. Because by the third time they're much more fluent at introducing that specific book. Also, because they're introducing a book, um, they have to use vocabulary from the book that recycles it. And, and the third thing is that um, students can introduce books they like to each other, which is going to encourage the student who's listening to maybe read that book. And it's also social proof. It shows that students are reading. So for the students that might be inclined not to read, it kind of encourages them to read. Now, it's a bit dangerous because if most of the students aren't reading, this is going to give social proof in the other direction. So you have to be quite careful with this. If most of the students are participating, this will encourage the remaining ones to continue. And we have a model for doing this. Okay? Uh, again, it's very important not to just think they can do it. Okay? We give them a, a model of how to introduce a book. Okay. what we expect. Okay. Um, the second thing is using the audio from the books. So I like to show, using the, the CDs that come with the readers, and show them that, in my experience, um, just listening is more difficult. Right? It makes it about one level more difficult. So if you don't have the text, if you're just listening to the CD, this is more difficult than reading. Um, however, reading and listening at the same time makes it easier. So you can, you can do more difficult texts if you have the CD at the same time. Uh, I just experiment and show them um, what is available, because we've got the CDs in the library as well. Um, have them do short, not too long, obviously, maybe two or three minutes, uh, and maybe work together to try and figure out what was, done, what was said in the book. And the third thing is, um, do you know the Choose Your Own Adventure books? Mm -hmm. Using these as a group activity in class has been really interesting for us. The students tend to enjoy the activity. And um, basically we'll give one book to three students, and so one student will read the page, tell them the, the choices, and they'll decide together as a group. It takes about 30 minutes, but it's a really interesting activity. Um, and you can have them all using the same book, or you can have the, a collection and have them choose the book to use that book. Those are my three supplementary activities. And the last topic we're going to talk about for about five minutes, this is going to end today's formal presentation is uh, this, how can we prevent cheating? <laughs> we, we, we didn't forget you. <laughs> so please, uh, how can you do this? Uh, yeah, discuss this in your group and uh, then we'll give you our magic answers here. Yeah. <laughs>
you know, I, I mean, there, there's a process here, okay? And this is, again, a kind of a check, okay? The book reports, you mentioned the book reports, okay? We have specific instructions that if you copy a book report from Google or any other source, you fail. Okay? And, 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 and it's, it's amazing how easy it is to identify these kind of book reports, right? I mean, these sentences, these sentences are just too beautiful, okay? Uh, and, and so, uh, so that, that's one thing. And uh, then finally, um, Observing students, right? I mean, during class period, you know, you don't, we don't have our head down. We, we try to observe students and you, and you see their actions and, and then talking to students, you know, about books. And so we can randomly call students forward and talk to them. And, you know, and you don't have to do it all the time, you know, but, uh, uh, and you can really shock them if you call the same student, you know, two weeks in a row or something, right? And that, that'll totally, totally throw off the, the scheduling, you know. But, um, but anyways, you have to do this weekly, really, to, to reinforce the penalty. And, and, and through doing this, we've had, you know, uh, very uh, good results. Very good results. Not perfect. Not per we have had kids fail. Okay. Uh, and we have an approach with that. I think it's worth stating. If a student, if a student is caught doing one of these things, we tell them you fail. At the same time, we tell them we hope you will continue coming to class to read. Okay, okay. And what's very interesting, you do get two distinct types of students. There is the student who just stopped and said I failed. But then there is a student. You know, again, this is the context of Japan. They're with this group of students. They don't want the other students to to know they failed, so they keep coming, and what we will do, because we are kind, heartful teachers, <laughs> if they will continue coming a couple weeks, then we will pull them aside and talk to them again and say, if you continue to read like this and, and meet this goal, you can get a passing C. Okay? And, and I think that's a reasonable, I mean, that, that, that's kind of a, a reasonable approach. So this is the approach we developed, and I think we're, we're quite pleased with it. Ben, do you have anything to add? No. Okay. And so, so uh, we kind of detail this, uh, uh, these forms even in, in this manual. So uh, this is, uh, does that kind of answer your question? Yes. Yes. But, but one thing is the student may ask whether they read the same book. Both of you read the same book, and then I said, I didn't read Ask you, and then you tell me, and then I use my own words rather than Google. That's another way of cheating. Mm, well, <laughs> so, because yeah. I also found these, so that's the reason. For example, they don't, um, because if, any, if a lot of students um, find some summary from mm. you know, Google, right, right. then it's easy to find out because we just have a clear, right? But if I ask you, if I ask a student, This was written last year in November, December. It was published in April. And this is the guide we're going to give students next month when we start the new semester. So you can see the changes here, how we've progressed the program. But this explains a lot of the thinking that went into what we're doing. And that's it. Right, this workshop is scheduled to finish at 2.35. So we have about six or seven minutes if you have any questions.
or if you want to run out and get some coffee, or yeah, anything like that. So, any questions that we haven't covered so far? Um, if I start, it's more English like library. What's your budget? You know, how much money do you have to buy books? Uh, what's the goal? How much time are you going to spend? In general, if you're going to be reading in class, you need at least one book for every student. That's the bare minimum, I think. You probably want an extra few for when the students finish to change around. Uh, beyond that, as many as you can get. We have 20,000 books, but we don't have enough. So. But at the very minimum, one book per student, plus an extra couple so they can exchange them. Yes, I am very interested. I think the, the, the program is really very successful I and mean, then you are diligent and conscientious. <laughs> but I really, I really want to know how much time you spend on these. Because as a, if you teach at the university, you are supposed to do research as well. That takes a lot of time. So, if you wrap this, and then how much, how many hours a week do you think? Well, the nice thing about this program is that we spent an incredible amount of time creating it, thinking about it, and developing worksheets. Like the worksheets you'll see in this guide are the tenth version. Right? We've gone through multiple versions. For the other teachers that teach these extensive reading classes alongside us. They really have almost no preparation time. It's, it's a turnkey program. You can pick up the guide, you can get your books, and you can just run the class. Uh, there's, there's a minimal amount of checking each week. Teachers can do most of their paperwork in the class while the students are reading. Um, say 15 to 30 minutes a week per class in terms of checking and scanning. And so, on. so it's a minimal time commitment for teachers. But the program coordinators, it's quite lovely. Well, no, that's, that's right. Uh, the, uh, <clears throat> it's, it's the process of you know, determining the system that will work for your university. Uh, but, but now our intention is that we're able to give new teachers this manual. And uh, the, 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 the thing you have to be careful about with it, 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 our situation is that teachers can think this is too easy. Okay, they, they have to believe in extensive reading, okay? And, and so that we're able to give this to them, and, and uh, outside of class, 15 to 30 minutes should pretty much cover the, the amount of time that uh, is necessary uh, to, to, to process these papers, okay? And uh, this, is, this is quite a small time commitment, I think, you know, in terms of class, class. So, so I don't know if that answers your question. Oh, yeah. I'm just curious. Yeah. Because, um, mm -hmm. Because sometimes I ask my students to do to report to me, and then because one student may take uh, five minutes, so if no, no, ten I, students. You <coughs> our, our, our when we process book reports, one student takes thirty seconds. Wow. Yeah, you just look at the yeah, length. We don't just, check. We don't check the, the the detailed content or make any corrections. No. The, the the point is the reading. The book report is only a demonstration that they read it, okay? Uh, but as, you're, as you mentioned, you can get students copying, but we can pretty much see that in the first sentence, you know? So, so, so yeah, it's, it's, this is more like scanning in terms of reading, you know, what, the way we process these. Mm -hmm. so, so one student, uh, and what, so we're talking about classes of 40 students, 15 to 20 minutes for the, the class. 15, 15, 30 minutes. Yeah. But some students here in Korea, they want some um, university students, they want to see people. But if we, we also have that. We have some students who say, please check my English, please check. And we say, I'm really sorry, this is not a writing class. We have. 40, this is a reading class. We have 40 students. I have 
260 students who are doing this program in my classes. So that's not possible. So it's just part of the, the course. We can't give written feedback. Occasionally, if I read it and I like what they say, I might write a comment. But I won't go through and, and check their English. It's just not possible. Mm. Yeah, yeah, you just have to. The, the, you just have to set the policy, you know, and, and uh, I think it's reasonable. Yeah, any, anybody else? Or? Well, I think it's, you have five minutes, you know, we, we, give, we give you a five minute gift. Thank you very much for your real positive participation. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much.